Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you lived and lived well. To really understand and expand on this quote, I'd like to tell the story of Sisyphus, the king of the Greek city of Corinth, as he stands atop a mile high hill and gazes over his land. As he watches, he sees the daughter of the local river god being kidnapped by Zeus. Now, Sisyphus, being the clever yet devious king he is, sees an opportunity in the tragedy. As the city of Corinth suffers from a drought, Sisyphus tells the, uh, he tells the river god that he will uh, create a deal with him on the condition that he creates a river for the city, solving their water shortage. The river god does agree to create a river for the city, but Zeus objects. So over the next year, Sisyphus uses manipulation and dishonesty to escape Zeus's attempts to kill him. Inevitably, though, Sisyphus is caught and banished to the underworld for tricking the gods. There, Sisyphus is condemned to roll a boulder up a hill for all of eternity. The trick to his punishment being that no matter how hard he pushes, he can never reach the top of the hill. Sisyphus is unable to succeed. He is not even granted the pleasure of completing his meaningless task. Sisyphus is no different from us. Replace the boulder with emails and assignments, his constant trickery with our attempts to escape our duties and work, and his inability to reach the top of the mountain with our nature to keep seeking further and further forever unattainable heights of affluence and status. Never do we get the chance to smile as we reach the top of the hill. Of these two models for Sisyphus, which do you think would give him the best chance at living a life worth living? Is it the one in which he wakes up, faces the insurmountable mountain in front of him, stares at the boulder he has no choice but to push, and asks himself if he is happy? Or is it the model in which Sisyphus wakes up and asks himself simply if he is capable of discipline? Now, do note that happiness as an emotion can coincide with discipline as a state of being. But happiness is not a permanent state. There's an old Persian adage that says, this too shall pass, meaning whatever comes our way will eventually change. Our sadness will pass, as will our happiness. Because of the impermanence of emotions, it seems more practical for Sisyphus to orient himself around the more lasting goal of engaging with discipline. Still, happiness is enticing. There are those who claim they can create an everlasting happiness within you, and many more who believe in the grander value of happiness. Aristotle, Zeno of Sidium, and the Dalai Lama have all said the purpose of life is happiness. Certainly, happiness has a place, but the constant pursuit of joys and pleasures leads to the creation of a mysterious figure, a god in our lives, the god of happiness we keep seeking but never find ourselves truly absolved in. If happiness is the answer, surely it would be just to always be happy. But it is not. It is irrational and on some levels unreasonable to be happy all the time. Say in a period of mourning, the best action you can take is to express empathy, to resign your happiness for the healing of the group. Or take the trope of the struggling artist, someone who lives through an ocean of emotions to live vividly and to create. This particular painting on the left is by Georgia O'Keeffe. She once said, I've been absolutely terrified every moment of my life, and I've never let it stop me from doing a single thing I wanted to do. To her, her happiness, or the lack of it, has no effect on the way she lives her life. In a more scientific sense, estimates describe 35 to 50% of our happiness as determined by our genetics. For some people, happiness is simply not part of their condition. And this is no mistake. More intelligent people may naturally veer to unhappiness, and more optimistic people, who tend to be happier, exhibit worse decision-making in certain instances. Maybe happiness is not the answer we've been looking for in our lives. But what is? Well, we can't truly control our emotions, our thoughts, and our circumstances, but we do have the freedom of effort, and the freedom to direct our efforts. My model of life is a proponent of the value of discipline. Sisyphus has been forced onto the hill and he certainly can't control his circumstances, but what he can do is accept his unhappiness, 
his shame and his pain, but move forward anyways. And pushing the boulder in spite of his feelings, not seeking happiness, but being with the state of resolve as he commits to it, Sisyphus will find something greater than happiness. Sisyphus will find the beauty of discipline, the beauty of friction. When you commit to an act of discipline, even something as small as hanging up your coat when you get home instead of throwing it on the ground, you're telling your mind that its constant barrage of negative thoughts and sensations of sloth are less powerful than your will. You can take that example of hanging up a coat and extend it. The harder the task, the more power your will will gain. Cold showers, meditation, putting your phone away, any of these tasks will add power to your will. With discipline, emotions and thoughts stop impeding our action. Discipline allows action regardless of emotion. And as our emotions no longer prevent us from fulfilling our duties with discipline, we can finally see that frustration and anxiety and love and grief are all colors of our human experience, and that without them, our lives would be boring and gray. Discipline allows us to no longer be impeded by our emotions, but guided by them. Now, discipline seems practical in a philosophical sense, but science also agrees more and more with the value of discipline. The particular brain region associated with a sense of resolve and hard work is the anterior mid-singlet cortex, or the AMCC for short. This brain region physically grows. It gets larger each time you do a difficult task you don't want to do. Now, the significance of these findings is that recent science has found not only is this brain region associated with a sense of willpower, but with the will to live. You can grow your will to live, and by some accounts, actually live a longer life by doing the hard work you don't want to do. Now, the trick to the AMCC is that it also shrinks if you don't use it often enough. So you have to continuously challenge yourself and find new tasks that will maintain a level of difficulty. You have to do what you don't want to do. You have to do the disciplined thing. Now, for Sisyphus, had he approached Aesopus much sooner, he could have told him simply that he would work for him and have used discipline rather than cleverness to bring water to his city. In doing so, he might have also grown his AMCC with his discipline and lived a longer life. Discipline and resolve, like happiness, is a state of being but the human mind tends to veer to seeking meaning. Now, the meaning of discipline is up to you to decide, but the model I propose today is one in which you seek human development. To seek the development of yourself and of others by providing, by sacrificing, and by doing what you know is right. It takes discipline to be good. For ourselves, on some days, discipline may mean making the bed in the morning. And the human development achieved from that act is simply a sense of cleanliness. For other people or on other days, discipline may mean holding your tongue at the appropriate moment, doing the thing you know is right and that you need to do, or going out of your way to help someone. Moving forward, we can focus on what we can do and stop doing to be disciplined and consequently to grow our anterior mid cingulate cortex. Take your pick from the above list of choices and find something that interests you but you know you would struggle with. Find something that in the moment wouldn't directly create a sense of happiness in you but instead would create a sense of resolve. Maybe even think of something outside of the list you've been wanting to implement like a work schedule and put it into a specific time-bound goal. Keep developing this act until it is no longer difficult and then find something new that is difficult and that you don't want to do. Continuously update your tasks so that it remains hard, so that your anterior mid singlet cortex can grow and your will and tenacity to live with it. Once you understand the meaning of life is not to be happy, but to be strong, you will be infinitely grateful for the climb itself. You have the choice to succumb to comfort and the constant chase for temporary happiness, or the choice to take pride in your work and to push with determination regardless of the feelings that come your way. Every act of self-control you take takes you one step closer to understanding who you are and what you are truly made of. So pay no or at least less mind to your happiness. Focus on action and doing what must be done. 
Because the trick to life is that the push is unavoidable, the boulder is unavoidable, and there is no peak of the mountain to reach, nor should there be. Thank you.